In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> well, this morning, it's going to be a little bit different in terms of what I'm going to be sharing with you. You won't have my three points. Um, I'm going to be sharing a few points, but then particularly going to be looking at an issue that we as a church need to look at and confront as we move forward. But I want to begin with that gospel reading because there were two things that stood out for me that I believe apply for us as well. There is one verse where Jesus says in Mark 9 verses 33 and 4, he's, we read, Jesus asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. Haven't we had that experience at times? You know, you're busy talking to somebody about something and then, or that person, and suddenly that person arrives and is with you as well. And you all go, hmm? And you're all totally silent about what to say next. And there are those moments that are embarrassing. And here we have those disciples talking about which one of them is going to be greater from here on. And then suddenly Jesus is there with them and they are so embarrassed and they're silent. One of the things about St. Cuthbert Church is that we do not seek to be silent. We do not seek to be silent. And let me just share with you, because in some of my previous talks I've spoken about retaining a confidentiality of not just spreading everything around, which can easily take place. And so within that, there is confidentiality at different levels. And so within our search committee, for example, there's a confidentiality of not just spreading everything around and everybody taking different sides and opinions, but them trying to do the discernment themselves as to where we're going. At a vestry level, there are some issues that we need to be confidential about and not just spread around. And as we have been tackling <clears throat> the issue of our property here, we have needed to retain some confidentiality, but at the same time, within the life of our church, we seek to be open. And at a leadership level, I want you to know that we try as hard as we can to be open with you, the people, about who we are and where we are going. And so this is one of the qualities about the features of our church that I, I really love. I do not sense in this church this hierarchy, but of us being together. We are a community, and we seek to be open to each other. So at St. Cuthbert, we do not seek to be silent. But then there's another scripture just right after that where we read this. Then Jesus took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And what I want to highlight again in terms of this church, St. Cuthbert, our focus is not to be old, but a little child. And I'm not talking about age here, because I know I'm in one of the oldies, but we're talking about the heart of who we are within our church. You know, there is, in some churches, such an ability to say, this is who we are, this is where we've come to, this is where we're staying, and we're not moving from there. And those are the churches that usually decline quite significantly. And what we are seeking to do within our church is to say, we are like that little child. We have a whole history. And we also have so much before us. And we need to ensure that we can be used and that God will use us to enable us to continue to grow and that we see ourselves as that little babe rather than this older community. 
At St. Cuthbert, our focus is not to be old, but a little child. So in the context of those two statements, that at St. Cuthbert, we do not seek to be silent, and at St. Cuthbert, our focus is, is not to be old, but a little child, let me share with you something of where we are at this time in relation to our property. Now, we have spoken about it before and tried to tackle a little bit of it and we're wanting to now keep you updated and open about where we are. Now, some of you are very familiar with all of this, some of you might not be, but let me just give you a brief summary. In 1978, I believe we began as the, in the sandwich shop, I think it was called, and there were several of you who were a part of that. Just put up your hand if you were a part of the sandwich shop. There we go. Some of our people who were a part of that right at the very beginning, and the church then continued to grow and moved to other churches. And the issue was that it was too small where they were and needed to find something larger. The church was continuing to grow. And then there was the purchase of this land in 2007. We bought this land and began the process of trying to continue that growth. And we have this part of the church was built, but this was not meant to be the end. There was going to be, in my understanding, an additional sanctuary. The place of worship was going to continue to extend out over there. And our church was going to continue to develop. The reality is that we are now at this time, and there have been some changes. The previous rector moved on, and by the way, he and I have, Father Desmond and I have a close friendship, and he's in touch with all of my thoughts as well. But he moved on, and we had other people who moved on, some passed on, and The church moved into a place where it did not seem feasible that we could continue to grow and to do all of the buildings. And I've been with you for two years now and have been in some of the finance meetings, vestry meetings, and so on, and have just been aware that we're struggling. We pay so much on our debts on our loans that we have from the banks. About 30% of our budget every month just disappears to the banks on the two loans that we have. And we struggle to then be able to find the means to really enhance and develop the life of this church. Now, I know it would be wonderful if someone won the lottery and was able to pay off all their money. Or, but, you know, when we look at it and say, would you like to contribute towards our debt? It's not a very high priority. If we talk about our ministries, our growth, and so on, there's so much more enthusiasm. And what I believe, and we have met in the vestry, the wardens, and myself, that we needed to take this a step further. And so we established a property committee which consisted of the wardens and myself and four wonderful leaders from our church, very skilled in this field, who assisted us. And we began to look at the different options that were before us. And I shared a little bit of this with you a a while ago, but what we have discerned, we took on, decided that we needed to look seriously at selling some of our property, which is sitting here, but is not being used by us at all. And we began to meet with different people, and then we took on a realtor who was pursuing it for us, and he came to us with a person who was interested in purchasing some of our land. And we have now entered into a letter of intent, which basically is 120 days in which they have, and they can extend that by an additional 30 days, where they are discerning if they want to purchase some of our property. And 
the date that was set was October the 12th, and it could probably, will probably go on through the middle of November. Where we are is that they are looking seriously at being able to develop this land and to purchase it from us. And we believe that it could be such an exciting time. There is a slide that I'm going to put up right now which shows what the proposal has been. Now, just for you to know, the purchase of what they're saying is that they, if they can get people who will decide on the, on the actual buildings, they will adapt them. But this is the basic proposal. Here we are in the church ourselves. The, if you can show that little arrow down, we're in the, there, and that little lighter area is where we are sitting right now. This land would be sold here. And these are some of the buildings that they would put up. They are going to be just single story, and they're going to be used for um, commercial use. This one option, which I think is exciting, at the bottom there is a coffee shop that they're looking at having. And so we can have people getting coffee and then coming along into our worship or after a worship, going along for a cup of coffee as well. Um, so, but I think it could be incredibly exciting. And the imagery that I believe we need to move from is instead of this being our hallowed ground here to say, this is, in fact, going to be so exciting. There's going to be activity. We're going to be much more central. We're going to be a part of it. People will notice us when they are driving along the road. They're going to be stopping by here, and they're going to see there's a church with us as well. And so there are so many interesting things. This blue over here is a detention pond that needs to be put in over at the top left there. And um, that won't really affect us. It'll essentially just probably look like grass, but it's going to be a detention pond that will be built there. And it'll go up to our little memorial prayer garden up there in the corner. So that's the pathway. So that won't be affected at all. And um, it'll be just, um, just basic green all around it. And we will have these buildings. There's a lot of parking space that's going to be put there, so it's not going to be big buildings that are going to come right down to the corner, but there's going to be a lot of parking that will be here as well. Now, these plans are just a proposal. It needs to be worked through. It might change, but it gives us an indication of what could take place here. I know that for ourselves on the committees, as when we initially thought, we thought, particularly with this building down here, we thought, oh, no. We have that nice green space, but we've adapted, and I believe in all we will adapt to this, and I think it can be incredibly interesting and exciting as we move forward. The reason that I needed to share with this with you today is that they are wanting to try and lease these buildings, set them up, and they need to have a coming soon sign that's going to be put on that corner right there. And this is what is going to be going up possibly this week. Um, and so I'm needing you to know about it. There is a for lease sign. Initially, they just wanted this for lease sign to go there. And we were saying, we don't want people to think that this church is closing. We're not closing at all. And so they put up that property sign as well with the plan of what they're doing, which includes the church. And we also insisted that they had another statement saying St. Cuthbert welcomes you to their 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock services and day school. We are continuing. We are growing. We are developing as a church. And a part of that is enabling this property to be used appropriately. But I believe it is ultimately going to be such a positive thing. You know, they even spoke, and we don't fully know, but we were talking to them about a possible sign, and they're thinking of calling it a Saints Crossing, is what it could be called. And we would be a part of Saints Crossing. And um, it is a statement about the person who is looking at doing this development. He's a strong Christian himself and really upholds our values and is going to do everything to ensure that our church is not 
impacted inappropriately, like we've spoken about, are there going to be trash bins that we're going to be looking on and all that sort of thing? And he's really going to be taking care of that so that that isn't an issue, but enhancing our life as a church. And so I believe that we need to continue to cast the vision that St. Cuthbert is a child ready to grow. We are a child ready to grow. And we have that statement, which has been a part of us all the time for so many years, building the kingdom of God together. This is who we are, and this is where we're going. There will be some people outside afterwards, if you want to, there's some of these little plans are available, and particularly in two weeks' time, there's going to be more opportunity to talk to some of our people. But hold on. And let's build the kingdom of God together. Amen.